ready to shoot. They got a big win, and so um, they, they were coming in with a threat in their eyes, and I thought we didn't match it just at the beginning, um, especially defensively. Well, and Grace, by the way, is player of the week, so congrats to her. And also, give her credit in that game because she did not put a bad ball in the basket in the first half. Very rarely, then, do you see somebody come back and be that hot in the second half. It's usually an off night. That was an off half night, and she was huge in that second half. Oh, man, did she hit some tough shots? She scored the final six points of the game, and, and that's something that, you know, we're learning as a coaching staff, and we trust Grace so much. Um, you know, we kind of know she's going to take tough shots. She's going to hit tough shots, and we just know it, it's got to come. And, like, we kind of let her do her thing. Um, she usually figures it out, and really grateful she did. You know, and I think that's also, also a teammate thing, too. You know, her teammates are pumping her up. Everyone on the bench, you have Lauren Ramsey, you have uh, Zaria Coleman, you have Kay Barth Lofton, who, who are there, you know, pumping her up and not, you know, not saying negative things. Um, and the people in the first half, Kat hit some huge shots in the first half. Lily made some good hustle plays. Taylor hit some timely shots. And Steph Hart was super aggressive. We kind of, we've seen that defensively, but um, I thought yesterday or two days ago, it was nice to see that, you know, on the court, ready to score the ball from Steph. So even when Grace wasn't scoring, having the team really pick her up. And then when she took over, it was nice that we were within striking distance doubt about it so you've set yourself up pretty well but even though on paper you know McHenry's really struggling only two wins in the league you can't let up because you have to win this one before you go on the road for two yeah I mean this is the GLBC so you know every every team is well coached every team is a really good team and so we don't want to let up at all um, you know and I think that's something that we've talked about as a team you know it, it's bigger than McHenry in a sense um, you know, we want to keep playing. We want to compete on the GLBC level. We want to compete on the national level, and I think that's taking care of business. And you know, our team has remained focused, um, remained focused in this seven-game win streak. You know, I think as difficult as it is to move on from one game, it's like you know, I, I talked about it last time. You beat Umsel, you get one day, and then you you move on to Drury. You beat Drury, you get that night, and then you move on to Southwest Baptist. Southwest Baptist close game, you get that day, and now you move on to McHenry. So it's kind of it's a good thing to have that next game. So we're not dwelling too much and not getting too high or too low. And now, uh, now we just have to go out and prove it again. Yep. What's the key tonight? Um, they start five guards. They're a little bit smaller. Um, they do a good job defensively, trying to be scrappy. So defensively, jumping to the ball and taking away cuts, um, taking away screens, and then offensively is just being aggressive. You know, push the ball in transition and continuing to rebound the ball. Um, I think in all of one of these games in the win streak, we've rebounded, we've out rebounded the opponent, and so I think that's something that's just an easy. Hey, if we're if we're winning that battle, we're going to be in a position to win the game. So limiting McHenry to one shot and then running in transition, I think we can do a really good job of that tonight. All right, good luck. Thanks, Mark. There you go, Coach Matt Nelson on the pregame show. Take a two-minute break. We'll come back. Lineups will get you started. Back in two on the Flyers Sports Network. Flyer fans, the donut shop in Lockport is the perfect spot to indulge in the area's finest sweet treats. Located at 1143 East 9th Street in Lockport, as well as their new location at 23836 West 135th Street in Plainfield. The donut shop offers 28 varieties of freshly made donuts, as well as a full assortment of specialty donuts. Lewis students and staff will receive 10% off any order with valid ID at either Lockport or Plainfield locations. The donut shop, a proud sponsor of Flyer Athletics. Strike and Spare 2 is a proud sponsor of Lewis University Athletics. Sign up for one of our many leagues or just stop by for some great fun. Located in Lockport, Strike and Spare offers something for bowlers of all ages and skill levels. We have great food and drink and also a large banquet room available for your next birthday party, fundraiser, or special event. Search Strike and Spare 2 to find us on Facebook. And check out our special offers and upcoming events. Go Flyers! Flyer fans, the Golden Corral in Bolingbrook offers an endless buffet of delicious comfort food classics. Located at 381 Brookview Lane in Bolingbrook. Stop by and sample their fried chicken, meatloaf, pot roast, and freshly carved sirloin. The Golden Corral offers a complete salad and dessert bar, along with a wide variety of side dishes. Create your own unique and perfect plate. The Golden Corral in Bolingbrook, a proud partner of Lewis University Athletics. 
At Lewis University, your academic journey is personalized to bring out your best. In small classes with innovative approaches and dedicated professors, you'll be welcomed into a caring community that equips you for success in an ever-changing world. Lewis offers undergraduate and graduate programs in more than 100 majors. Learn more about our majors, student life, admission, and financial aid, and discover your opportunity at Lewis University. Visit us at www.lewisu.edu to schedule an in-person or virtual appointment and imagine how you will impact your world for the better. Lewis University Basketball on 1340 WJOL. Now for our starting lineups, starting lineups brought to you by Valley View Dental, a family practice that treats you like family, and the official dental provider for Flyer Athletics. Can I Mark Fasco? McKendry and the Flyers, doubleheader women's game begins. First off, with a look at McKendry. Haley Zilka, 5'6", senior from Oak Creek, Wisconsin. 
Kalen Froby, 5'7", redshirt junior from Lincoln, Illinois. Claire Breeden is a 5'6", freshman from Jerseyville. Aaron Golden, 5'8", sophomore from Batavia. And Christy Fortune, 5'10", sophomore from Appleton, Wisconsin, Appleton West High School. Gary Kirkhoff, their head coach. And the lights will dim, and we will get you the Flyers starting lineup here for game one of this twin bill this evening, the final home action of the regular season. Flyers trying to win their eighth in a row this week. They've already beaten 18th ranked in the country, Missouri St. Louis, and then fourth ranked in the nation, Drury and trying to keep this win streak alive. Stephanie Hart, the 5'8 senior from Geneva. Taylor Galuza, the 5'8 sophomore from Lincoln Way West. Grace Silver, the reigning player of the week in the GLVC, the 5'5 junior from Sun Prairie, Wisconsin. Six foot sophomore from LaGrange Lions Township, Lily Courier. And in the post, Catherine Schmidt, the six foot sophomore from Burlington Central High School. Cat, as she has known, has been playing outstanding ball all season long. Right now averaging 15 points. She's had a double-double and an almost double-double in her last two games. She had nine boards after 15 points scored on Thursday. Actually, I mean on Saturday. 15 points per game for Schmidt and Hilber. Then 12 points a game for Galuza. And, well, it was Jenna Badali, but, of course, our reigning freshman of the year in this league out for the rest of the season. Red shirting will play next year. Lily Courier at 10 points per game. So McKendry, the Bearcats in the purple, Flyers in the red. Left to right in front of me for the Flyers. Schmidt to jump against Froby and tip control by Lewis Yu. And Taylor Galuza high left to get it going. Grabs right side. High left Galuza. Looking down low, can't find anybody. Finally right wing for Hart. Hilber lobs it Courier, shot clock to seven. Lilly was wide right side Hart, shot clock to three. So Cat will take a little turnaround from 10, low right side and hit that. So Schmidt gets us going. She had a couple of big threes early in the first quarter for us to keep us within in shouting distance after Southwest got off to such a huge start against us. Down, down 13 in that game early and rallied to win it late. Go left side on the wing, skip pass to the right side, launch a three and miss that. Flyers will get the rebound. That was Breeden. And Lewis in the front. Fortune leads them at 12 a game. Breeden at 11 and a half per contest. Aaron Golden at nine a contest. Sydney Dekoff at eight a game. will miss a long two-pointer. And Kendrew gets the board and here they come. Kick it left wing, will knock the pass away, but McKendry will keep it. Now they go right corner. To the free throw line, up back up top. Shot clock to 10 now for them. Right side, a drive, and a little bit of a bump foul on Galuza, they say. That is before the shot from Froby. So they'll put 20 back on the shot clock, and they'll bring it in. Baseline right of the basket. Made it right corner. Now swinging around back up top. Fortune is their, their lone big, so to speak, at 5'10", but she's at the top of the key right now. They drive down low left under the basket. Could Matt say basically a five-guard offense. They'll launch a three left corner and hit that. Zilka gets them on the board with the three. So they take that 3-2 lead here early. We run a little weave. Hilbert. A three for 
Steph, high left, won't go. Hart tried to follow her own shot. They're going to call a foul on the rebound. That will be on Steph. She'll pick up that whistle. And they'll make a couple of subs. We mentioned Deacoff. She'll come in. 5'10 Richard Sr. from Pekin, Illinois. And Jenna Krause will be the inbound at 5'8", senior from Seymour, Wisconsin. They put some pressure on. Get it to Krause, and she'll come front. Drive left. Hand it off. And go free throw line. Take a little 12-foot jump shot. It's short. Rebound battle for it. It's on the ground. It'll be a jump ball off the miss by Dekoff. Bearcats keep it. They'll bring it in on the left side of the basket here on the baseline this time around. Over the right corner. Swing around left now. Just perimeter passing for the moment. Get it low left. Can't find the cutter, so driving is golden. Should put up a tough shot from six. Low left and hit that. They take an early 5-2 lead in their last game. Got off to a tough start in the first quarter. They were down eight after one and played you know, pretty even after that, but that slow start cost them and never came back in their loss. 15-footer, good. Grace Hilber. Tough shot for Lewis. Flyers back within one, and they're going to call traveling violation on the Bearcats. So it's Palooza will walk it up. Look at the standings in an hour division. Southern Indiana is first at four, 14 and two. Then the Flyers all by themselves in second at 10 and six. High right side for three. No good for Hilber. And Bearcats will get the rebound. And then Springfield's in third at 10 and eight. So we basically have a two game lead in the battle for second in the division. Ball knocked away by Hart, but Bearcats hang on to it. Take a three left wing and hit that. Dekoff, well again, doesn't matter what your record is. If you come out and hit your threes against anybody, you're gonna be in it. Not only that, they're up for the moment at 8-4 as we miss a three. We'll get an offensive rebound from Hilber off the miss by Cat. Pass knocked out of bounds, Flyers will hang on. And again, McKendry's in last in our division at two and 13. They've lost six in a row. So we've won seven straight, they've lost six, but again, matter much at the moment. In the West, Drury is 15 and three. And they have a six game lead in that division. So as Taylor down the left side of the lane gets fouled, she'll shoot two. And then in the Central, Missouri St. Louis 16 and two, Truman State 13 and four. And then Maryville's at eight and 10 after that. So not much of a race in that division after those two teams. Free throw good for Taylor. In the point standings, Missouri St. Louis is number one. Southern Indy is two. Drury is three. Truman four. Then the Flyers are five. And unless Truman loses, even if we win out, we probably will stay at five. But get that first home game in the conference tournament a week from tonight. So eight six. We're down two after the free throws. They go left wing, ball knocked around, they'll save it. That's number 33 for them, Morgan Nettles, 5'5 freshman from St. Louis. Eight on their shot clock. Catch and shoot three up top, that's no good. Cat the rebound, Flyers the other way. Another long pass to Hart, intercepted, good anticipation. Dekoff will go all the way, lay it up, no, but a foul, and she'll shoot two. Cat got the whistle, so Dekoff the steal, and she'll go to the line. So we're number five. And a pretty safe number five right now as Springfield is at six. McKendry 14 and Jewel 15. And everybody makes the tournament, so obviously McKendry and Jewel are in, and they'll have to start though on the road. So nine six after the first free throw. And 10 as that one goes in. Now you, if you look at the numbers, the 
the Flyers are th ranked third in the conference in scoring. We average 70 and a half points per game. McKendry is second to last at 53. But they have 10 already here early in the opening five minutes. So again, well, that doesn't necessarily mean much. On any particular night, right side. Drive to the bucket, Amelia Motz, yes, and a foul chance for a three-point play. So the senior, Amelia, comes off the bench, and right away becomes a factor and goes to the stripe. It was senior day here two days ago, and she is our only senior not coming back. She's a fifth-year senior. Everybody else that says senior is going to come back for their COVID year and play. Media break, 10-8, Flyers down two, 4.54 for the period, back in a minute on the Flyers Sports Network. Lewis University Athletics is brought to you by the Holiday Inn and Suites Bolingbrook at Route 53 and I-55. Proudly serving the Bolingbrook Romeoville area just minutes from Lewis University. The hotel, recently renovated, offers plenty of banquet space for your upcoming events. 145 guest rooms and suites, restaurant and lounge. Remodeled, comfortable hotel with friendly service. It's the perfect place to kick back, relax, and be yourself. Information about the hotel is available at BolingbrookHolidayInn.com. Flyer fans, the Tasty Waffle in Romeoville is a proud sponsor of Lewis University Athletics. Family owned and operated since 2006, the Tasty Waffle is open from 6 a.m. to 4 p.m. daily, offering some of the best breakfast and lunch fare in the region. Their large breakfast menu features their famous omelets, stuffed French toast, delicate crepes, and hearty skillets. While serving up delicious wraps and homemade soups for lunch, stop by the Tasty Waffle located at 632 South Weber Road or give them a call at 815-439-8151. Lewis University Basketball on 1340 WJOL. Mott's at the line. Now, if you're McKendry, this is when you want to get Lewis, though. Not that they haven't been busy. But for the Flyers, this is their eighth game in 16 days. Free throw good. So Flyers within one at 10-9. So if you're McKendry, Flyers have had some really big games against you know, top 20 teams. You might get a letdown there. Plus, you might get tired legs. This is our eighth game in two and a half weeks. So not even two and a half for that matter, really. So this is a test for Lewis, no matter what stats say on paper. Ooh, head fake travel, high left side turnover for Christy Fortune. They can put the pressure on the Flyers and, you know, establish them some self early like they have. Could be they could be good for them. Sean Brown comes in for the Flyers. Goes to the right wing. Mott's at the free throw line. Drives right side of the lane. Banks it up and in. Well, we spread out the offense against their 2-3 zone, and we made it tough for them with our other post players outside of the basket. Got a matchup that we liked with Amelia, and she made the most of it and laid it home. 11-10, Flyers now in front here by one with four minutes to go in the first. They go left side. Bounce pass low left. Brown tries to say it cannot, and getting the ball then. Golden turns, spins, and hits a little seven-footer. Of course, Brown, the 5'8 redshirt sophomore from Joliet Central. Of course, we are a sophomore-dominated team. Drive in the lane, Steph Hart misses a little running eight footer, Mott's the rebound, try to go back up strong, knocked away from her, Hart picked it up, kicks it out to Brown, Brown will miss the three, Hilber that rebound, and she'll hit a 15 footer. Well, stuck with it long enough to get the points. 13-12 Flyers, go left side. Drive down to the basket, kick it left side, good quick passing. They'll get a three high left of the arc from Dukoff and miss it, though, and Hilbert the rebound for Lewis. Ran there set well, just didn't finish. We get a cat three. Good. Right side on the wing. Quick three before they could set up defensively. And 16-12 Flyers. High scoring period. Top of the key there for Breeden. On the right wing for Dukoff. Low right into the block. 
Tough shot with the left hand and in. Impressive move there by the former Batavia Bulldog, Aaron Golden. Flyers by two at 16-14. Mots pull up from 12. Jumper no off the back of the rim. Follows her shot, goes back up strong and puts it in. So Amelia transferred in for her last year here. After she played at Alaska Anchorage and we get a little bump foul from Sean Brown up top before he shot. Mots has been great for us this season. We're going to bring in three fresh bodies, including the first time we'll see Tara into the game. So both the Luza sisters on the floor right now. On the left side. Courier's back out there as well. On the right wing. Zilka can't shoot it. Goes into the paint, and Tara, nice job to try to deny that pass in the post. Matter of fact, she actually caught that pass, but she went through Kraus to make that catch, and they're going to call that foul and over the limit, and they're going to shoot two the rest of the way with 1.58 to go in the quarter. They were third in scoring. They're 14. Scoring defense. They're last. They give up 75 a game. Lewis gives up 68 a game. We're in the bottom half of that stat. We, we score a lot, but we give up a lot normally. That's kind of where we're going now for the moment. 18-16 after the free throw. It's Flyers by two. Get it in two. Taylor Galuzzo will bring it up. And just going to call a little hand check foul from the side there. That's a tough little touch foul on Froby. Three-pointers, Flyers are third best in the league. McKendry at the bottom. But again, so far so good for them tonight in that area. Flyers by two in the ball, down the right side of the lane. Taylor banks it off the glass and in. The loser with a nice bucket there. Impressive. And our lead is four. They'll drive the left side, runner no. Rebound battle for Flyers get that. Breeden couldn't finish. That was Terra with the rebound. Gets it to Taylor. They go right corner. Mott. Swinging around against their 2-3 zone. She spread it out. Taylor up top to Mott. Got plenty of time here. Sean is open, so she'll take a left wing three and hit it. Wide open. They didn't jump out at her. And so she was able to connect. And 23-16. 107 for the period. Ball knocked out of bounds with pressure. In a moment, Flyers two of seven from three, while well, it's two of five from McKendry. And our lead is seven now. And a little weave. Get it up to Decon. High left side, Golden. Left wing, Decon now. Seven on the shot clock. Drive middle of the lane. Oh, and Tara knocked the ball away from Kraus, but they'll call her for the foul. So she has two quick fouls on her. 23 to 16, Flyers, 43 seconds for the quarter. McKendry, 5 of 10 overall. Lewis, 9 of 16 overall right now. And of course, Matt talked about winning the rebound battle, which we have done in this seven game win streak. One of the reasons why we won seven in a row, besides another the fact that we're finally healthy. Free throw good, or as healthy as we're going to be. We're winning the rebound battle more often than not now. Can't lead that for eight to four for the moment. Free throw missed, we get that rebound. Right corner, nothing there, so back up top. Now Mots. A game for the Flyers. That's Ryan O'Garrick, 5'10 junior from Providence. Hands it off. Taylor Galuza, shot clock to eight. Mott will penetrate, go all the way, bank it up. Oh, they're going to say charge. It went in, but going to call a charge on Mott. 17 seconds to go in the quarter. 
and Bearcats will have to go all the way against full court pressure here. And they get it in. Give it to Breeden. 10 seconds as they get into the front court. Drive left. Breed into the free throw line. Passes it back up top for a three by Decoff. That's no good at the buzzer. They got the shot they wanted. Just went off the back of the iron. After one quarter, Flyers lead it 23 to 17. Back in a minute on the Flyer Sports Network. Fat Ricky's Old World Pizza is Chicago's number one pizza. Fat Ricky's is located on Route 53 in Normantown Road and offers a casual dining experience with a traditional Chicago-style menu. Treat yourself to the best pizza around or feast on homemade Italian beef and sausage, gourmet pastas, subs, or Angus burgers. You can quench your thirst with Fat Ricky's full beverage options. Also, Fat Ricky's Old World Pizza provides delivery service to bring great taste right to your home. For more information, visit FatRickys.com or call 815-293-2900. That's 815-293-2900. At Loyola Medicine, we place the physical and emotional needs of each patient above all else. We're proud to be ranked among the top three hospitals in Illinois with six nationally ranked specialties by U.S. News & Report. We care for the sickest patients in Illinois, handling some of the most complex and challenging cases, providing high-quality, compassionate care to every patient. Our holistic approach guarantees that at Loyola, you are treated in both body and soul. To make an appointment, visit LoyolaMedicine.org. Loyola Medicine, we also treat the human spirit. Lewis University Basketball on 1340 WJOL. So 10 minutes in, Flyers have a 23 to 17 lead. Seven early on for Mott's off the bench. Five for Kat Schmidt, four apiece for Taylor Galuza and Grace Hilbert. Three for Sean Brown. Henry side as the Flyers have it. Golden with six, Ekoff five, Zilka and Kraus with three. Top is Hart. Right side of Garrett. Go right. Baseline jumper, a little 12 footer long, but a rebound. Yes, O'Garrick off the miss of Kat. Give the Flyers. A lead now of 25 to 17. Drive the floor all the way against the press break. Nobody stopped Zilka. Left side layup is good. And they had Kraus hang around to hassle the inbounds pass. And it's knocked out of bounds. Now we'll come have Steph help out. She'll bring it up. So Hart across the timeline. We'll talk men's soccer at halftime. They had a nice fall season. The right side. Back out of Garrett, back underneath, knocked away, almost stolen. Courier was able to get it, but it's still going to be flyer ball because they do the whistle. Decoff kicked it with her foot. She tried to get it. The Flyers will have it side court right. Last home regular season game. They go on the road for two coming up to close things out. Well, they open up again the conference turning at home next Monday. Cat left side, she'll drive. Schmidt turns, doesn't shoot. It goes O'Garrick, right corner for three, rings out, and rebound knocked out of bounds to Lewis as it went off of Kraus there. Or Golden, sorry. Golden touched it last. Bounds. Cat. Kicks it out. Courier for three. Oh, rings out. Oh, Garrett, the rebound, no, but a foul, she'll shoot too. Got pushed in the back. And she's trying to shoot it by Breeden. And Garrett will have two. Hilber will come back in. Loser gets a breather. Free throw is good. Six to 19 and 27 is that one perfect as well. They drive left. Kick it on the wing to Decoff. Now high right is Golden. Penetration to the free throw line and traveling violation. Kraus got to the free throw line. 
spun around to pass it back up top, and I think both feet basically left the ground at the same time when she did that. The lead is eight. And they spread it out against their zone. They go left side, Hilbert. She'll take a 16-foot jumper, miss it short. Her own rebound back up and in. Well, the shot almost came basically right back to her. <laughs> and she was able to put it in. And a timeout called by McKendry. Well, they're going to make it a full timeout, so we'll take the full break. 29-19, Lewis back in a minute on the Flyer Sports Network. From the Abri Credit Union Studio, this is Will County's News Talk Sports, WJOL, Joliet. At Cheddar Scratch Kitchen, we're serving up homemade American classics at wallet-pleasing prices. Homemade Popeye, hand-breaded chicken tenders, and country fried steak. Every visit starts with a free croissant baked in-house and drizzled with house-made honey butter. Visit us today on Remington Boulevard or order online at Cheddar's.com. Cheddar's Scratch Kitchen is proud to be an official partner for Lewis Flyer Athletics. Cheddar's Scratch Kitchen. Get a lot for not a lot. Visit Cheddar's on Remington Boulevard. Lewis University Athletics is brought to you by the Holiday Inn and Suites Bowling Brook at Route 53 and I-55. Proudly serving the Bowling Brook Romeoville area just minutes from Lewis University. The hotel recently renovated offers plenty of banquet space for your upcoming events. 145 guest rooms and suites, restaurant and lounge. Remodeled, comfortable hotel with friendly service. It's the perfect place to kick back, relax and be yourself. Information about the hotel is available at BowlingBrookHolidayInn.com. Lewis University Basketball on 1340 WJOL. Flyers by 10. And mention Hilber today being announced player of the week for last week. Of course, we had those three wins. The Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday victories. And Hilber steals an inbound on the full court press. Gives it to Courier, who misses the shot. Trying to save it inbounds was Cat, but... It ends up going to the Bearcats who come front court. Hilber in those three wins averaged 18 and a half points per game over that stretch. And almost five rebounds per game as well. Nine on their shot clock. They go high left. That's Krause. Right corner. Launch a three and hit that. Madison Jones just come in the game, a 5'8 senior from Abingdon, Illinois. Went to Lincoln Land Community College. Flyers by seven. Run a little weave, get it up to Courier. Robert underneath to Schmidt, turns, throws it up in traffic, gets her own rebound as it hit the backboard. Now they're going to say offensive foul as she turned. And I think an Aaron elbow gets Krause and puts her to the ground. The foul is called. Again. Hilbert had 24 against fourth-ranked Drury. She had 17 against 18th-ranked Umsum. Had 15 against Southwest Baptist two days ago. And that's after she was 0 for 7 to start the game. Then had a huge second half that kept key that come from behind win. Gets her first career player of the week. We had Kat Schmidt win one in December. And now Grace today. Seven minutes to go here in the first half of play. Flyers by seven. Bearcats in the front. Get it up top. Zuffa. Now Decaw. Drives. Shot put up and in. Nice job by Decaw. Trying to get a block from behind there. It didn't do quite the way we had planned by Mons, who has it now top for Lewis. Hart for three. Missed that. Rebound comes down to the Bearcats. On the run. Right side. Hart, great job to knock the ball away and steal it eventually. And then there's going to be a reach in foul trying to take it away from O'Gara. So Hart, great job to get back. Get ball and not play her. And eventually, players come out of there with it. And Taylor Galuza comes in. Hart will sit. And we're going to try to give some players a little bit of rest here if we can today. That's why you know, an early lead would be nice. But obviously, 
five point lead isn't going <laughs> to do much at the moment for that. Mutz, right side Galuzzi. She'll drive. Kick it out for a Courier three. Good, Lily Courier with a big three. Higher right of the arc. 32 to 24. Leo Garrick skidded to the ground as Breeden had the ball and she stopped and then the defender strolled right by. But Flyers end up with the ball anyway. Courier for three again. This one glances off the side of the iron. Taylor dives right corner, saves it, but saves it to the Bearcats. The right side. Penetration, drive low left, banks it up short. So Zilka misses, Flyers rebound, run the floor. Taylor Galuza splits a double team, off the glass, no, rebound. O'Garrick, yes, big offensive board and put back. Ryan O'Garrick. And really well in this first half off the bench. Our lead is 10, 520 for the half. The baseline knocked out of bounds. Good play by Grace. The new poll has Lenville State number one in the nation. Drury's number four. Umsel 18. Have low left, bank it up and in. Actually, that's the last poll. The new poll is actually going to come out tomorrow. So I would imagine both those teams after the Flyers beat them to drop, but we'll wait and see. That's right, the new one not out yet until tomorrow. Five minutes to go in the half. O'Garrick right side. Hands it off Taylor Galuza. Rob down low to Mott. It's knocked out of bounds by Dekoff, and Flyers will hang on to it. comes. Shantan Brown gets it in to Taylor Galuza. Hit on the shot clock. Left side for Taylor. Turn spins. Goes up top. O'Garrick for three. Top of the key. Short. Her own rebound. Back up and in. Followed her shot beautifully. Gets a six footer in the lane. What a half she's had. That's 36-26. Runner off the glass too hard. Flyers get that rebound. Fast break, two on one if they hurry. Sean to Courier. She'll put it up and in and a foul. Chance for a three point play. So nicely done. Flyers starting to get a little breathing room now and a little momentum. 38 26 and a chance to add to that. So, how about O'Garrick right now as the team leader in points with eight? Courier at the stripe. She has five. And that one good. Flyers at 47% overall. McHenry's 53%. But the key is, Flyers have already taken 32 shots. McHenry has taken 17 shots. That's why the Flyers are up 13 points with four minutes to go in the half. Rebounds. The reason why that... Shot total is so different. Drive left side, layup good there by Golden. Flyers are winning the rebound battle 18 to seven. And already have 16 second chance points to just two for McHenry. Drive down right, yes! Taylor Galuza with a basket and she's fouled by Golden. And another chance for another three point play. Garrick will come out, Hilbert back in. And first time today for Lauren Ramsey, the 5'9 Richard sophomore from Mother McCauley. 41-28 Flyers for now. So she hits the free throw. Taylor out, Tara back in for her. 42 to 28, 337 for the half. Full, full court flyer pressure. In the front is Golden. Now I looked and I saw the Bearcats only with nine players dressed tonight. So you talk about tired legs on the Flyers' side and they're, you know, eighth game in 16 days, but 
This team, not a lot of fresh bodies tonight for them anyway. That pass blocked out of bounds by Sean, and they're going to say it was blocked off of a purple jersey, so Flyers will get it. And inbounds. It was tipped. That'd actually be saved inbounds by Hilbert to Mots, and Mots will bring it front. Good job there defensively by Breeden to challenge the inbound there. Right side, Ramsey. Lob into Mots. A lot of defensive arms in there to knock it away. And then Mots went to the ground hard trying to get that loose ball after the pass was deflected. And then Mots will actually be the one to be called for the foul. She's up and okay in the possession bear camp. McHenry paced so far by Golden's eight. Seven for Decon. Mots challenging up top and gets a jump ball there with Madison Jones. Good aggressive D by Mots. You know, you're going to get aggressive everything from her every second she's on the floor. Bearcats keep it on the arrow. And now it's Breeden. And they only have four uniformed players on the bench. They lob it down low left. Good defense there by Tara to make sure that wasn't an easy shot. Then she got a handle on the ball, knocked it away, and eventually saved Shawton Brown. They double-team her in the backcourt, and they're going to cause another jump ball. At that time, oh, we're going to call the timeout before that jump ball. I mean, the error would have gone to us anyway. If it was just a timeout with 2.21 to go here in the half. It'll be a full break, 42-28 to 28 Flyers back in a minute on the Flyers Network. Fire fans, the Golden Corral in Bolingbrook offers an endless buffet of delicious comfort food classics. Located at 381 Brookview Lane in Bolingbrook. Stop by and sample their fried chicken, meatloaf, pot roast, and freshly carved sirloin. The Golden Corral offers a complete salad and dessert bar, along with a wide variety of side dishes. Create your own unique and perfect plate. The Golden Corral in Bolingbrook, a proud partner of Lewis University Athletics. Flyer fans, the donut shop in Lockport is the perfect spot to indulge in the area's finest sweet treats. Located at 1143 East 9th Street in Lockport, as well as their new location at 23836 West 135th Street in Plainfield. The donut shop offers 28 varieties of freshly made donuts, as well as a full assortment of specialty donuts. Lewis students and staff will receive 10% off any order with valid ID at either Lockport or Plainfield locations. The donut shop, a proud sponsor of Flyer Athletics. Lewis University Basketball on 1340 WJOL. Now off the inbounds, Lauren Ramsey took a three, missed it. It went up and over. And so now McKendry has possession. Have it up top. They're right on the wing. Take that long three and hit that. Madison Jones. So Jones has a couple trays, and it's 42-31, Lewis. 140 for the half. Tara Galuga. It's at Mott's. Mott's free throw line. Drives and stops. Ball knocked out of her hands, and she'll dive, and it's a jump ball. Flyers keep it on the air. 90 seconds for the half. And going to have... Hart come in. No one's come out yet. <laughs> we <We've> got <laughs> Now we're set. Lob it in. Mott's left corner. Keep it high right. Hilbert thought about a three, didn't take it. Now she'll take a 17-foot jumper. Hit that, Grace Hilbert. And we put the full court press on. The official blew the whistle as soon as the ball came in. I'm not sure what that's about. A minute 20 for the half. 44-31 on the scoreboard. Flyers out in front. The two officials talking something over here.
Well, what they're going to call is that Amelia Mott hit the arm of the inbounder as the ball came in. And so that'll be her third, and she'll have to come out for the final 120 of the half. Get it in. New Dekoff. Drive the middle. Kick it low left. Nothing there, so back up top. And that's going to be traveling violation. Jenna Krause jumped up in the air like she was going to pass it in the corner, but she realized it wasn't going to get there <laughs> before being blocked, so she came down landed with it. And so turnover. Flyers in the front. A minute to go in the first half of play. Ramsey is open, 17-foot jump of her is good, Lauren Ramsey. Turnovers, McKendry has nine, Flyers with four. 15-point lead, 44 seconds for the half. Left side, Breeden, kick it left corner, hit the three, yes, Madison Jones. Three trays in the first half, and her team in it. 46-34, we can take a last shot here as they turn the shot clock off. We've got 20 seconds. Silver has it high left. Grab run a high pick of Curry. 12 seconds, will run her off the glass for Hilbert, good! Well, running eight footer left side for Grace Hilbert. Five seconds, four, into the front court, go to the basket, get the shot blocked by Hart, Breeden. Threw it up close to the bucket. Hart was able to get a piece of it and a clean block, and that's the half. Lewis leads at 48-34 after two quarters play. And after a two-minute timeout, we'll come back and talk a little men's Flyers soccer. Back in two minutes on WJR on the Flyers Sports Network. You're invited to check out Aloft Bowling Brock. Stay and play just 30 minutes from downtown Chicago with the top shopping and dining across the street. Amp up your hotel stay with a specialty cocktail at XYZ Bar or take a dip in the indoor pool. Kick back in your Loft-inspired guest room and connect with fast and free Wi-Fi. Book now at aloftbowlingbrook.com with our best rate guarantee. Our lowest rate is just $95 from Thursday through Sunday and $115 Monday through Wednesday. Aloft Bowling Brook. Different by design. When you need a physician, there's one name to remember. Loyola. Because Loyola Medicine offers convenient local access to world-class care. Loyola University Medical Center has 22 locations of care in the west, northwest, and southwest suburbs. We offer the latest in innovation, skill, and technology, yet provide compassionate, individualized care. For a Loyola physician near you, call 888-LUHS-888 or visit LoyolaMedicine.org. Loyola Medicine. We also treat the human spirit. Fat Ricky's Old World Pizza is Chicago's number one pizza. Fat Ricky's is located on Route 53 in Normantown Road and offers a casual dining experience with a traditional Chicago-style menu. Treat yourself to the best pizza around or feast on homemade Italian beef and sausage, gourmet pastas, subs, or Angus burgers. You can quench your thirst with Fat Ricky's full beverage options. Also, Fat Ricky's Old World Pizza provides delivery service to bring great taste right to your home. For more information, visit FatRickys.com or call 815-293-2900. That's 815-293-2900. 293-2900. Lewis University Athletics is brought to you by the Holiday Inn and Suites Bolingbrook at Route 53 and I-55. Proudly serving the Bolingbrook Romeoville area just minutes from Lewis University. The hotel recently renovated offers plenty of banquet space for your upcoming events. 145 guest rooms and suites, restaurant and lounge. Remodeled, comfortable hotel with friendly service. It's the perfect place to kick back, relax, and be yourself. Information about the hotel is available at BolingbrookHolidayInn.com. Lewis University Basketball on 1340 WJOL. Halftime. It's the Fat Ricky's Halftime Show. Fat Ricky's of Romeoville, the official pizzeria of Flyer Athletics. Again, I'm Mark Vasco. Flyers up in the women's game here. Game one of our doubleheader tonight, 48-34 over McKendry. And now to talk to Evan Feifels, our men's soccer coach. We had a really good fall men's soccer season. Made it to the NCAA tournament and closed out the season in high fashion. We had seven wins out of our last eight games in the regular season. 
and the only game that wasn't a win was a double overtime scoreless tie with Drury. And Drury, fifth in the nation. So <laughs> that's that's pretty good out of our league. Other than that, you know, one of the highlights was a 4-1 win over Jewel, a 2-0 win over Southwest Baptist, and beat S&T 3-0 to close out the regular season. We faced Drury then in the GLVC tournament. Lost to them 1-0 in overtime. So we played a Drury double overtime tie on October 22nd. Then November 7th in the conference tournament. Lost to them in double overtime, one to nothing. But they're fifth in the nation. And as well as we had been playing, we make the NCAAs anyway. We make it to the first round against 10th ranked Davenport. And don't just beat them, we you know, beat them by two. Two nothing was the final tally in that one which takes us to the second round of the NCAA tournament against second-ranked Lake Erie, November the 20th, and a tough 2-1 to loss to Lake Erie to end our season. But, boy, what a nice, fun one that was. We had so many ties. We had 12 wins. We had a 3-3 double overtime tie with Parkside. We beat McKendry in double overtime 2-1, to one. lost to Umsel 2-1, to one in overtime you know, had the overtime against Drury had the overtime against Drury I mean just crazy but a, a really really fun season had a chance to talk to longtime coach Evan Feifel's all about it. oh Evan good to see you and uh, also good to read about uh, this past season too it was uh, had to be a fun one yeah definitely uh, it was a good year in the right direction now and also we've had uh, three winning seasons in a row and got to the top four in the league so we're all you know one of the top leagues in the country, top 15. So when you're one of the top four teams, you're, you're going in the right direction. And so it's, uh, we feel, again, uh, our goal is obviously to challenge for the championship and the top spot. But uh, we're, we're going where we need to go. We just need to keep our building on it. Yeah, it's been a while now since we talked about going deep into the national tournament. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We haven't been back. Uh, 2013 was the last time they were in the tournament. So it's been a while, but uh, it's just a credit to the league. Uh, you know, we've had, what, eight Final Four teams in the last ten years. So, it's, again, uh, there's no easy games in the league. And it's, you know, we, we probably have a good six teams that are just very well-resourced and have the, the, the means to go ahead and, and challenge the top team in the country. So, it's no year's going to be easy, but uh, we just got to keep on striving and working towards that. And, uh, you know, one foot forward and take the next step in that direction. Well, and of course, we always have to ask the COVID question. So, how have you been handling these last two tough yeah, years? I think I think it's been a lot like this year. It's been a lot better than the indoor sports. So we, you know, in the fall, being an outdoor sport, it wasn't really any concerns that we had. We had a couple guys that missed here and there a game, but I think uh, you know nothing close to what we want to get indoors with basketball. It's had to deal with you know we didn't have uh, we didn't have any of our games canceled. Or so I know that's, you know, a lot different than what the normal basketball had to deal with. So, uh, and then the spring was kind of different last spring because obviously we didn't play in the fall. So it was, we were out there uh, training in uh, our beautiful <laughs> Chicago February weather with a, with a game down in St. Louis outside the third week of February. So preparation wasn't the best, and, uh, you know, and our start kind of looked like that too. Uh, we didn't have a good start, I think we went won four and one maybe and then we rattled off I think eight or nine wins in a row so it was just again getting accustomed getting outside and getting the team revved up for outdoor uh, playing so uh, so again it's uh, we've been pretty lucky I think this fall we were pretty lucky with the schedules and games and not having to kind of postpone anything. But you didn't have to play like the national team in below zero weather? <laughs> yeah no yeah. so that's uh, that's always a plus right? <laughs> How could they do that? Yeah, I don't know. It's 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 crazy. It's crazy. Your team though highlights from this past year. Well, I think the highlights, you know, that we had probably again we had that run. So I think we went oh just off the top of head, I think we won nine out of ten games. So we had that run that we probably almost went two months, a uh, month and a half without without a loss. I think we're one or two in the league offensively. So our we didn't have a problem putting the ball in the back of the net. 
don't think that took off right there. Um, we kind of rode that. You know, we had guys who were just towards the second half of the season playing well and finding the back of the net. And that makes the game always a lot easier. And if you can go ahead and put a goal in and then you know, defend a little bit, that's to your advantage and let the opponent ch uh, chase the game. And we had uh, a good core of seniors. We had uh, five starting seniors. So I think that was, again, you know, guys who've been in the program you know, three, four years and able to contribute. So it was good to see their development throughout those years right there. Um, so we just, you know, now we got to go ahead and replace those guys. So that's always the, you know, Right. Each year, find out the, figure out the puzzle and the pieces and, and put them together. Yeah, any more that are going to use an extra COVID year here? We had one player last fall that uh, used his COVID year, and then we have three that have that eligibility, um, but uh, they're looking to do masters, at, not at Lewis, so we won't have anybody using gotcha. this upcoming fall. Gotcha. So, and again, yeah, in this sport, where you get that first one, it makes all the difference in the world. Yeah, it does. It, it makes a, it makes a big difference because now you got to change. You know, the, other, the opponent has to change, and you can, you know, depending upon how much time's left in the game, you can make changes or at the same point just continue to try to get that second one right there. So I think we had, and you know, and obviously I'm knowledge by the league, but I think we had five or six all conference players. I think we had four all regional players. We had a scholar all American. So we had guys who had just, you know. Fantastic seasons and you know, tribute to them, you know, the season that they had. And this is another thing I think about soccer is you get that first one, it, it seems like the offense is really contagious. I think everybody thinks, well, he put it in the back of the net, I, this shot's going to go in too. Yeah, and I think, I think it just, it builds confidence throughout all the teams on the field because, again, it's, they know how, you know, hard it is to score in the game right there. So when you have that, Unlike other sports, maybe you score a touchdown, you're still, you know, you're still in the game. But when you get that goal, again, you know things are going to open up because the team's going to have to commit more players forward. And they're going to have to go ahead and put more bodies in, in, into the offensive half. And that's going to open up more for us, you know, the team that's leading at that point. And, and guys see that. And they understand that right there. They're not hey, the opening. The game's going to get open. they got, they got to chase the game. they got to put more guys forward, which is going to help us out, you know, offensively and possibly go ahead get a second one. So how's this year, the you know, recruiting going and all that kind of stuff? Yeah, we have five commitments. So we got 31 returners. We have two teams. We have a first team and a reserve team. So we got 31 returners. We got six starters coming back. And we have uh, five new players that have committed to us. Uh, a couple of local guys and one international guy. So uh, we feel that's a, a good core right now, but we're still probably good about another two, three months away from finishing up our recruiting class. So. It's been, again, it's, it wasn't like last winter where everything was pretty much shut down showcases and a lot of it was video that we were watching. Uh, it's better than that, but still there's a lot of showcases that canceled and there's still not, you know, those uh, oh, yeah. formats to go ahead and really actually see kids live. So, uh, again, it's a little bit better, probably about 20, 30% better, but still nothing close to, you know, getting out and seeing, you know, the level and the, the amount of time and showcases that we've done. Pre-COVID, how's your backline look? Backline is we'll have um, our goalkeeper who is a freshman of the year in our league. We got him coming back, and we have two of our back four, and then one of our recruits uh, is a defender. So uh, it should be solid, uh, but we're always looking to add some depth <laughs> there and, and to get better. We always want to get better. Well, and that, for recruiting, is it can I find the best soccer player, or do you try to fit needs? Yeah, it is. It's a combination of both. You definitely don't want to pass on somebody that, you know, you might have that kind of position filled. And, but if that player that's returning has a little versatility and you have a, a somebody that you've seen that's really going to be at a level that's going to go ahead and change a game, you don't want to pass on that young man. You know, anytime you come across a game changer and they have an interest in your program, you want to go after that. You'll find a place. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And then the other, other end of it, we, we don't want, you know, 10, 10 defenders and no attackers at that point. So you're always obviously recruiting and putting, like I said, the puzzle together and making sure you have a good balance. But again, um, anytime you, you find those uh, game changer guys, you got to go after them. Evan Feifels, a longtime men's soccer coach here at Lewis U. Halftime, Flyers up 48-34. Yeah, Flyers won that first round game 
in the NCAA tournament. We talk about scoring first, they scored first against second ranked Lake Erie in that second round of the NCAA tournament, but that team didn't fold and they tied it up in the 54th minute and they got the game winner against us in the 72nd minute. So uh, a tough way to go down for the Flyers in the NCAAs, but 12 in here, second round of the NCAAs. And again, thanks to Evan for his time. Half time, two minute break. We'll come back into the second half, back in two on the Flyer Sports Network. Windy City Limousine is a proud sponsor of Lewis University Athletics. We have every type of vehicle, from sedans and hybrids to 55 passenger motor coaches, including SUVs, limousines, executive vans, luxury minibuses, and party buses. You cannot beat Windy City's competitive rates and first class service. Find out why customers throughout the Chicagoland area and around the country are choosing Windy City Limousine for their car and bus services. Call 847 916 9300 or visit windycitylimos.com today. Strike and Spare Tube is a proud sponsor of Lewis University Athletics. Sign up for one of our many leagues or just stop by for some great fun. Located in Lockport, Strike and Spare offers something for bowlers of all ages and skill levels. We have great food and drink and also a large banquet room available for your next birthday party, fundraiser, or special event. Search Strike and Spare Tube to find us on Facebook. And check out our special offers and upcoming events. Go Flyers! At Cheddar Scratch Kitchen, we're serving up homemade American classics at wallet-pleasing prices. Homemade pot pie, hand-breaded chicken tenders, and country fried steak. Every visit starts with a free croissant baked in-house and drizzled with house-made honey butter. Visit us today on Remington Boulevard or order online at Cheddar's.com. Cheddar Scratch Kitchen is proud to be an official partner for Lewis Flyer Athletics. Cheddar Scratch Kitchen. Get a lot for not a lot. Visit Cheddar's on Remington Boulevard. Ticket Smarter is glad we are back to holding live events. If you are looking to buy tickets for the best sports, concerts, and theater events, all at the very best price, look no further than TicketSmarter.com or on the app. Buying tickets at Ticket Smarter will help support children in need. For every ticket transaction on Ticket Smarter, $1 will be donated to a children's charity. Ticket Smarter is proud to be the official ticketing partner of Lewis University. Ticket Smarter, a smarter way to buy tickets. Lewis University Basketball on 1340 WJOL. So here we go to start the second half. Flyers up 48-34. Bearcats will have it when left to right in front of me as I'm once again at the top of the balcony here at Neil Carey Arena. Again, without a mask, so I want to be away from everybody. So not courtside for these last couple of seasons. They have a free throw line. We'll take a three, a long one, and head it right out of the gate. Fortune puts the tray. The numbers, again, McHenry shooting a very well. They're shooting very well, 59%. Flyers, 51%. From three, McHenry, six out of 10. Lewis, just three out of 14. Courier, she'll take a three high right of the arc. Missed that, long rebound, comes down to the Bearcats. But the story for the Flyers is offensive rebounds and second chance points. Drive right side, layup, no good. Rebound comes down to Lewis, says Zilka. Could not finish that one. Step at it, knocked away from her. Ball on the ground, and Bearcats will have that one. Come front. We have 11 offensive rebounds to their one. They'll take a three left corner. Miss that. Get a catch. Schmidt. Rebound. Oh, but she tried to get it to Hilbert. Could not. Taking it away was Golden. And all of a sudden, 48 39. So a little run here to start the quarter for McKendry. Goes right corner, baseline to Hart, bump, so she flips it back to Courier, eight footer, good. We are winning rebounds 20 to eight. Second chance points. Flyers lead that 16 to two. The Bearcats had a flare go to the ground briefly. No whistle either way, and it's high right side. Zilka. For the key, Zilka, ball knocked away and stolen by Steph Hart. Senior, but she'll play next year as well. Drive right side. She'll take that COVID year. Hilder, 16 foot jumper around and out. Rebound Bearcats. Front court for Golden. Back zone defensively. 
They're going to shoot over the top of it. A little backdoor cut there. And it's going to be out of bounds to Lewis U. Is trying to backdoor to Foby, who could not catch up to it. We'll make a whole bunch of subs here. Matter of fact, it's going to be a full line change. We have five new players in for the Flyers. Lindsey Harrison, first time we've seen her on the floor in a while. The six-foot redshirt junior from York Bay. She's coming back next year. And up top, Mott. Harrison. Ramsey's back out there. Kara Galuzzi. And Annette having such a good first half for us. Jill Garrick, and she's back out there as well. Garrick, right side. Right corner, Mott. She'll take a three. Miss it. Rebound, knocked around, but Bearcats will have it. Run the floor into the front, and that's Zilka. My left side. Can't drive it against Ramsey. So they go back up, and nice job by Tara to knock it out of bounds. They'll keep possession. Individually for McKendry, it's 10 for Golden, 9 for Jones. She had three big threes at Four attempts in the first half for them. Ball knocked away. Their shot clock down to seven. Dekoff almost in the center circle. Going to have to hurry. She'll just throw one up from 19 and have that one miss everything. And it's out of bounds to Lewis. Good defense there by the Flyers. So 10 for Golden, nine for Jones, seven for Dekoff in the first half, five for Zilka. On the Lewis side. Mott's free throw line. Right wing Ramsey for an open three. Got it. Hilber has 10. O'Garrick with eight. Taylor Galuza with seven. Mott's with seven. They'll go right corner. Decoff for three. Rings out. Rebound Ramsey. It's at O'Garrick. On court Ramsey knocked away. And they'll steal it. Bearcats. Flyers did take good care of the ball in the first half, but some quick turnover skier, and boy, if that's Mott's foul, that's your fourth. And she's got four already, so she'll have to come back out. So Ramsey and Mott's will both come out. So Hart and Schmidt will come back in. Yeah, we had four turnovers in the first half. We had three already in the first four minutes of this period. So turnovers, it's 12 for them, 7 for Lewis. 53 to 39 the score, Lewis up top. Offensive foul on a push off though on the Bearcats. I think that was Breeden called for that. 5.55 to the third. Lewis the lead the ball. The biggest lead it was 15 and it was 46 to 31. Cat, an 18-foot jumper, high right of the arc is good! And we surpassed that now at 55 to 39. 535 to go in the third. They'll launch a three left corner. Decomp missed it. Rebound to Garrick. Quick outlet. Cat. Two trailers behind her. Dishes to Hardu, lays it up. No! And then O'Garrick knocked the ball back away to Tara, who lays it in. O'Garrick having a really good ball game here tonight disrupted them before they could get back and come the other way. Full timeout, 5.17 to go in the third, 57 to 39. Lewis the lead back after this on the Flyer Sports Network. Lewis University Athletics is brought to you by the Holiday Inn and Suites Bolingbrook at Route 53 and I-55. Proudly serving the Bolingbrook Romeoville area just minutes from Lewis University. The hotel, recently renovated, offers plenty of banquet space for your upcoming events. 145 guest rooms and suites, restaurant and lounge. Remodeled, comfortable hotel with friendly service. It's the perfect place to kick back, relax, and be yourself. Information about the hotel is available at BolingbrookHolidayInn.com. Flyer fans, the Tasty Waffle in Romeoville is a proud sponsor of Lewis University Athletics. Family owned and operated since 2006, the Tasty Waffle is open from 6 a.m. to 4 p.m. daily, offering some of the best breakfast and lunch fare in the region. Their large breakfast menu features their famous omelets, stuffed French toast, delicate crepes, and hearty skillets. While serving up delicious wraps and homemade soups for lunch, stop by the Tasty Waffle located at 632 South Weber Road or give them a call at 815-439-8151. 
Lewis University Basketball on 1340 WJOL. The Flyers up 57-39. Just about everybody involved, and that's been the case so far today. And Kayla Lofton not in uniform today. She's been bothered by a bad shoulder for a while now. Most players eligible to play. See in action. Five minutes for the period. We'll take a three high left of the yard. Miss that. By Dikov, long cat back offensive rebound though, keeps it alive for Kraus. Feeds down low for a nice bucket there by Madison Jones. Jones with a big right knee brace, but playing awfully well. Garrett thought about a three, didn't take it. Now Cat will and miss it from the top of the arc. And rebound comes down there, can run the floor by herself. Easy layup, yes. Roby, they lost sight of her. Uncontested layup. 57 43. Ramsey for three right wing. Got it. Didn't step out to her, and she hits the tray. They'll run the floor. No baseline. Double team. Ball knocked out of bounds by the Flyers, and they're going to say last touch by Kraus. Hilber back in. Taylor Galuza, the one who's going to come out. Now we'll get another break. So full break again, 60 to 43. Lewis, or we'll wait for the third back after this one minute timeout on the Flyer Network. Fat Ricky's Old World Pizza is Chicago's number one pizza. Fat Ricky's is located on Route 53 in Normantown Road and offers a casual dining experience with a traditional Chicago-style menu. Treat yourself to the best pizza around or feast on homemade Italian beef and sausage, gourmet pastas, subs, or Angus burgers. You can quench your thirst with Fat Ricky's full beverage options. Also, Fat Ricky's Old World Pizza provides delivery service to bring great taste right to your home. For more information, visit FatRickys.com or call 815-293-2900. That's 815-293-2900. At Loyola Medicine, we place the physical and emotional needs of each patient above all else. We're proud to be ranked among the top three hospitals in Illinois with six nationally ranked specialties by U.S. News & Report. We care for the sickest patients in Illinois, handling some of the most complex and challenging cases, providing high-quality, compassionate care to every patient. Our holistic approach guarantees that at Loyola, you are treated in both body and soul. To make an appointment, visit LoyolaMedicine.org. Loyola Medicine, we also treat the human spirit. Lewis University Basketball on 1340 WJOL. By the way, I haven't had a chance to mention it yet. Our men's lacrosse team in just their third year of existence, ranked number 17 in the nation, and had a big match this afternoon against seventh-ranked Mercyhurst. We lost it 17 to 5. But it was only a 3 to 2 game after the first quarter. Bob it up top. Then they outscored us 4 0 in the second to take control. And we only scored three goals in the second half. They win it 17 5 as that 17 footer rattles in and out. A miss there for Golden. Flyers have it. As we've already had against a couple of top 10 teams this year. We've won one and now drop one. They're ranked 17th in the country in men's lacrosse. Right side will get it from 16 feet, rolls off. Rebound comes down McKenzie. And they'll get it out. 60 to 43, Lewis. The left wing, Golden. Drive to the basket, a little four footer, banked it up and in. They have played really, really well. Hit their shots for the most part. O'Garrick with a bucket and a foul. It's a 10-footer. We'll go to the line. Trying to complete the three-point play. Which men's volleyball ranked ninth in the nation. Took on Quincy and beat them three straight. So 
three nothing win for Quincy. That was on Saturday. We throw no good for O'Gara. They'll get the rebound. Of course, we had that tough five set loss on Friday. And answer back and beat Quincy on Saturday in three. We had lost to Lindenwood on Friday. Back at home this Thursday, hosting Purdue Fort Wayne at 7. The free throw rolls around and in for Jenna Krause. All American Tyler Mitchum had 16 kills in just a three set match, so he was busy against Quincy on Saturday. Four new bodies come in. For McKendry. They rotate to their nine players that made the trip. 62 to 47, Lewis, the lead in the ball. Three minutes for the third. Killer Galuza hands it off Hart. Right side. Three pointer rolls off. We get an offensive rebound. Ramsey off the O'Garrick miss. So Ramsey, nicely done. Another offensive rebound. Courier, step through, banks it up. No, but a foul. Two shots coming for her after the foul by Fortune. at the stripe. Golden has 12, Jones with 11. Free throw good on their side. Flyers have 10 for O'Gara, 10 for Hilbert. And now 10 for Courier. She hits that free throw, Ramsey has eight. She's getting contributions from everybody, 64-47. Left side. Skip pass now for a three and good. Christy Fortune with the three. Well, they'll take this three point percentage anytime. They're seven out of 15. Flyers five out of 20 from long range. They're at 51% overall. Flyers at 50% overall. Courier left wing. Taylor Galuza with eight on the shot clock, low right, forces up a shot, no. Good defense there, the rebound, Bearcats. But again, 18 second chance points for Lewis off of offensive rebounds to their four in that category. So the Flyers are up 14 for now. It's a long way to go though, they're shooting well enough to hang in this game. A few more threes like that, Fortune, no, Dekoff hit one. Fortune passed up one, gave it to Dekoff and she hit it. 64-53. How about that? They're 8 of 16 from 3 today. The back within 11 points at 64-53. And 20 for the third. On the left side, Taylor Galuza. She'll launch a 3. Missed that off the back of the rim. Rebound battled for O'Garrick. And I think they're going to say that she got pushed in the back by Breeding. Fourth team foul, and we'll get it out of bounds. Well, we're trying our best to give Kat Schmidt you know, a rest in this game. And if she has to come back in, she will. But Schmidt has only played 15 minutes so far, which isn't nothing, but you know, they, they would like her to play no more than 20 if they can. Now, Courier, right side, Hart, Hart, up top, Courier for three, missed it, rebound, battle four, Bearcats get this one, they get it back, within single digits here, 49 seconds for the quarter, the right side with it, hand it off, run a little weave, run the free throw line, kick it back outside again, shot clock to 10 now for them. Zilka with it, left side drives, goes underneath the basket, and it's going to be out of bounds off the fingertips of Froby. Back to Lewis Hughes. 
Flyers can take one shot here with 26 seconds to go in the quarter. So up 11 with the ball. And Taylor Galuza just standing high left. That's a standing dribble. Running it down, 13 seconds. Grab it, free throw line, Curry. Back outside, O'Garrett. She'll drive, pull up jumper from 12, around and out. Rebound, Ramsey, no, at the buzzer. It was blocked by Dekoff. After three, Flyers lead 64-53. For the fourth quarter in a minute on the Flyers Sports Network. Windy City Limousine is a proud sponsor of Lewis University Athletics. We have every type of vehicle, from sedans and hybrids to 55 passenger motor coaches, including SUVs, limousines, executive vans, luxury minibuses, and party buses. You cannot be Windy City's competitive rates and first-class service. Find out why customers throughout the Chicagoland area and around the country are choosing Windy City Limousine for their car and bus services. Call 847-916-9300 or visit WindyCityLimos.com today. Flyer fans, the Golden Corral in Bolingbrook offers an endless buffet of delicious comfort food classics. Located at 381 Brookview Lane in Bolingbrook. Stop by and sample their fried chicken, meatloaf, pot roast, and freshly carved sirloin. The Golden Corral offers a complete salad and dessert bar, along with a wide variety of side dishes. Create your own unique and perfect plate. The Golden Corral in Bolingbrook, a proud partner of Lewis University Athletics. Lewis University Basketball on 1340 WJOL. Ten minutes to play in game one of our doubleheader. Flyers up 64-53, trying to win their eighth in a row, but Bearcats giving them all they can handle. Flyers won the first quarter 23 to 17. They won the second quarter 25 17, but Bearcats won the third quarter 19 16. Underneath, Schmidt dishes to Galuza, who gets fouled, and Taylor will shoot two as Kraus made contact. Although, if we catch a break, Taylor looked like she kind of jammed her knee when she stopped to shoot the shot. And then there was the contact made. Yeah, she's kind of flexing that knee. That's that's a tough luck foul on Kraus. Because again, I think Taylor fell more because she jammed her knee more than she got pushed by Kraus. Free throw, good. But again, if you're, other than obviously the rebound stats, you're the Bearcats. Got to be happy with just about everything in this game as that one rings out. But you're still down a dozen, 65-53 with the ball. And 9.38 to play. Especially when you're playing a team, you know, you're on the road. You're playing a team that's beaten a number 18 ranked team and a number four ranked team in the last couple of days. A little wrapper on pass stolen by Steph Hart. Good defense there. He'll give it to Steph and come front to Ramsey. She'll take a three left corner, miss it. Rebound battle four, and Bearcats will have it. Well, Taylor knocked the ball away. Lauren on the ground will pick it up. Ramsey to Tara. Cat fouled from behind, and Cat Schmidt to shoot two as Dekoff got her on the arm. Good hustle there for that loose ball. But yeah, McKendry is shooting 53% from the floor, 50% from three. Seven of eight from the line. Taylor's going to come out. She still is limping a little bit. Hilber back in. Free throw, good. Overall, Flyers lead rebounds, but it's tightened up 25-21. Free throw, no good there. We're leading points off a of turnover, 17-6, and we're leading points, second chance points, 18-4. That's the story here. A little basket, reverse layup, good. Kraus stuck with it. Good court press, we'll get it in in a hurry though to Hart. Kind of clear out for her. Step into the front. 
Good feed. Cat kicks it back out. Hilber for three right corner. Good. Grace Hilber. Well, when you need Grace, she comes through and forces a timeout. Now let's see if it's going to be a full. It's going to be. Well, they're going to make it a full. So 8.34 for the ball game. 69 to 55 Flyers back in a minute on the Flyer Sports Network. The Donut Shop in Lockport is the perfect spot to indulge in the area's finest sweet treats. Located at 1143 East 9th Street in Lockport, as well as their new location at 23836 West 135th Street in Plainfield. The Donut Shop offers 28 varieties of freshly made donuts, as well as a full assortment of specialty donuts. Lewis students and staff will receive 10% off any order with valid ID at either Lockport or Plainfield locations. The Donut Shop, a proud sponsor of Flyer Athletics. At Lewis University, your academic journey is personalized to bring out your best. In small classes with innovative approaches and dedicated professors, you'll be welcomed into a caring community that equips you for success in an ever-changing world. Lewis offers undergraduate and graduate programs in more than 100 majors. Learn more about our majors, student life, admission, and financial aid, and discover your opportunity at Lewis University. Visit us at www.lewisu.edu to schedule an in-person or virtual appointment and imagine how you will impact your world for the better. University Basketball on 1340 WJOL. Oh, the former Providence Celtic, Ryan O'Garrett. The story of this game, the 5'10 junior from Provi, has been outstanding today. 10 points in 15 minutes with five rebounds and two steals, and she's back out there now. 8.34 to play. Flyers up 69-55. The Cats have it against the press. Get it into Krause, and she'll come from. Take it left wing for a three. Got another one. Jones has hit four trays today, and the lead is just 11. They just keep shooting lights out to hang in there. Looks like they have a long way to go. Hart, right side, O'Gara. Going to pass it to Schmidt, knocked back in her face, but Cat ends up with it anyway. Breaks a double team and drives, and banks it up. No, but draws the foul, and Two shots coming as Golden gets the whistle there. So it's 13 for Hilbert, 10 for Courier, 10 for O'Gara, 8 for Taylor Galuza, 8 for Ramsey, 7 for Mott, who has four fouls and has had to sit for a while. Free throw good there for Schmidt. Cat in 18 minutes. This will be her 10th point if she hits it. She does not, so nine for her and four rebounds. Ball knocked away by Tara from behind, though, as the Bearcats coming up court, lose possession. Schmidt will miss a 15-footer. Bearcats get it anyway. Now come front. So for now, Lewis by a dozen. 7.45 remains. The launch of three again. This time a miss by Jones and Flyer rebound. Launch it ahead. Taylor Galuza. Schmidt at the point. High left side, Hilbert. Grace drives left. We have the reigning player of the week. Steph in the cat. Turn, spins. Good feed, O'Garrick. Five-footer banked it. No. Rebound tip. No. And rebound, O'Garrick over the top. So she missed a couple of close ones. And then picked up the whistle. Dikoff in. And Kratman Froby out. of an effort here by the Bearcats, and they're not done yet. They keep hitting threes. <laughs> this still going to be in doubt. The right side. Kraus. Back up top. Fortune. Drive right side. Bank shot short. Rebound O'Garrick, and she gets fouled from the side. Golden followed her own shot. I think they're going to get her for the foul. Yep. Well, that's Golden's fourth, so she'll come out for a bid, and Zilka will come back in. 6.58 to play. Roby wasn't out long, and now it'll be Jones who comes out. Seventy fifty-eight. Lewis the lead in the ball. Hilbert comes front. Top, can't. It looks and gets it back. Grace will take a three, rings out, rebound Bearcats. 
That's Zilka in the middle of the break. Goes left. They get it back up top again. Set up their half court, and it's going to be an offensive foul and a push. And Flyers will give Schmidt a rest again, and Motts will come in. 6.34 to play. Flyers up a dozen. Again, if you're Coach Nelson, you would like it to not have to put Cat back in the game, but we'll see what happens. Mott's first of all can't foul out. The Flyers have to keep their lead at more than 10. Killebrew. And a reach in against Kraus there. Now this game has been called very, very tight here today. And that is the fifth foul against the Bearcats. So Flyers will be shooting the rest of the way. Hart will come out. Ramsey will come back in. But after this crazy stretch of eight games in 16 days for Lewis. They finally get a couple days off. <laughs> Not many. Free throw good. Get a couple before they play at Maryville Thursday at S&T Saturday. But then have to go back. Monday in the first round of the tournament. Dara around the right side of the lane. Good. Roby. Get an inbound to O'Gara. As Krause stuck around to hassle the inbounds pass. And Flyers set it up. The left side, Ramsey. On the right side, Tara Galuza. Now hands it off, Hilbert. Back up, Ramsey. Ramsey. Tara puts up the shot in traffic. Charging foul call. As Kraus got in the way and got run over. Third on her now. 5.45 to play. Lewis by a dozen. Zilka. Right side, Kraus. Back up top. Reed. Right side of the lane, go all the way. Oh, Amelia Mott's got a hand on it and fouls out. She deflected the ball out of bounds against Dekoff. But she'll be done. And it'll be Courier back in for Amelia. Mott's ended up only playing about 14 minutes today. And it's tough to say, stop trying. You know, <laughs> you've got a chance, you think, to knock the ball away at the basket. You don't really think about, yes, but I've got four fouls in the heat of the moment. Free throw, curls over, good. For Sidney Dekoff out of Pekin. 72-62, Flyers by 10 on the ball. 5.25 to go. So it's Courier, Kilburn, O'Garrick, Ramsey, and Tara Galusa on the floor. Oh, Tara. It's going to get the pass, I think. O'Garrick lost the handle. The drive right side and a foul on Ramsey as Froby will shoot two. I think there was going to be a skip pass, but when she looked up to see if Tara was open, the ball got knocked away and stolen. So Hart comes in for O'Garrick. And Kat Schmidt will come back in for Ramsey. This is what we talked about, though. The free throw, good. You can look at records and stats all you want. This is a good league. And anybody can beat you on any given night, and the Bearcats are giving the Flyers all they can handle. And that one good as well. So with over five minutes to play, this is just an eight-point game. It's 72 to 64. Because they have shot extremely well and played extremely well. They're still at 54% for the game. And they are 9 of 18, 50% from three. Flyers at 43% overall. Six of 25 from three, that's only 24%. Courier got the ball, and they're gonna say she was pushed from behind by Fortune before any shot. And again, we're gonna shoot the rest of the way here, so two coming up for Lily Curry. Flyers leading rebounds by just three now, 28-25. They have done a much better job, Bearcats, in the second half in that category. Their key here is turnovers. Free throw, no good. 19-9, the turnover tally, so just nine for the Flyers. Free throw, 
throw, no good there. The Flyers missing their free throws. That tells you about tired legs. Bearcats are 11 of 12 from the stripe. Flyers are 14 out of 20. So this is still a game. This is a key possession for the Bearcats. With the ball, down eight. 4.40 to go. The right baseline. Wrapper on pass, knocked out of bounds by Steph Hart. Now the thing is, Taylor left the game. Taylor Galuza with the little tweaked knee. And you'd like to not have to put her back in because of that. Baseline will run her from eight, no good. We get a rebound coming down. Taylor Galuza gets it front court, Hilbert. Hilbert, hand off to Hart. Underneath, Courier turns, banks up with the left hand, too strong. Rebound comes down, and Courier gonna be a, called on a hold. Just her first, and now they're over the limit, so both teams will be shooting. The rest of it are 4.20 to go. Just two lead changes. McKendry last led, though, at 12-11. Biggest lead was 57 to 39. That seems like a long time ago, considering the score now 72 to 64. Plus, two shots coming for Fortune here. Free throw, good. That one good. How about this? Six point game, 72 66, 420 left. They continue their revolving door to try to keep at least some sort of fresh legs on the floor. Hilber, Hart, Schmidt, and now both Galuzas on the floor. So good to see Taylor back out there. So she must be okay. Taylor gets a little backdoor cut pass, kicks it outside. Around for a Terra three. God, a huge three. Terra Galuza high right of the arc. So Flyers up back by nine now. It's 75 66. 350 to go. Boy, was that just what the doctor ordered. Go right side. And Golden. And left to Breeden. A corner with it now. Nothing there for Decoff. Seven on the shot clock. They go to the free throw line. I'll kick it back out. Decoff's three is short. Flyer rebound. Taylor Galuza. Front court to Schmidt. Back up top. Taylor Galuza. Taylor. Back up now. Can at the point. Run that weave to Tara. Thought about a three. Didn't take it. Twelve on the shot clock to Schmidt. Hart. Take a three. Miss it long, rebound, comes down, Bearcats, knocked away from behind and stolen! And then a reach-in foul by Kraus. Hilbert knocked it away. Flyers pick it up, get fouled, and Schmidt at the line to shoot two with 3.01 remaining. Chance to make it maybe 10 or maybe 11 for the lead. Free throw good there. 76 66 301 to go should be a heck of a men's game still to come both those teams really good and that one good there so cat got them both ramsey in and taylor right back out again so taylor to lose a six three minutes to play bearcats have it up top Decoff at the point. Left wing there. Fortune can't shoot it. Golden. Back up top. Kraus. Ball knocked away, and they're going to call a reach in foul on Lewis, it appears, with 2.34 to go. Steph will pick up her second. And it'll be Breeden at the line. Jerseyville. Free throw good. Now on the Flyers' side, 15 for Hilbert. 11 for Schmidt with four rebounds. Is that one good? 10 for Courier, 10 for O'Gara. 
the lead back to just nine with 2.25 to go. 14 for Jones to lead them off the bench. Ramsey gives away. Terra now right side, Schmidt. 10 on the shot clock. Picked up a dribble. Finds Hart. Banked up a 10 footer, no, and the rebound comes down to the Bearcats. And a reach in foul there by Terra to try to get the ball back. So 14 for Jones, 12 for Dekoff, 12 for Golden. So many fouls called in this game. Breeden and Golden have four, and Kraus all have four. On the flyer side, we've already had one player foul out. Free throw, good. And Tara Galuza with four now. That's a free throw for Fortune. Missed it. Rebound comes down to the Flyers. Cat Schmidt. So Flyers up eight and the ball, two minutes to play. This one just Lewis trying to survive here today against one heck of a Bearcat effort. Right side. Filber drives right, flips it back out. Schmidt for three. Perfect. High arcing tray for Cat Schmidt just when Lewis needed it. 80 to 69 with 95 seconds to play. Right side on the wing. Kick it back outside to Dekoff. Guarding that three-point line well to the point where Ramsey actually reaches in against Fortune. And puts him at the line to shoot two. With 1.21 to go. 80-69 Lewis. McKendry for the game, 51%. And they are 9 of 19 from 3, 47.5%. Free throw, no good. Ooh. Their last two misses tough. Flyers 43% overall, 8 of 28 from 3, 29%. Free throw, good there. So one out of two. Flyers by 10 in the ball. 80 seconds to go, full court press. Flyers break it and go front. Terragalooza back up top, Hilbert. 70 seconds. One clock here to say the least. Up 80 to 70. Schmidt and they're going to call again. Just a little bump foul on Golden and two shots here for Cat. We talked about foul trouble. They had a bunch with four. Well, Golden was one of them. So she's out now. Schmidt at the strike. 59 seconds to go. And Lewis hits the first free throw. Cat Schmidt. And that one good as well. Timeout called by the visitors with 59 seconds to go. And the Flyers up by a dozen. We'll keep it here. Chance to mention. At Cheddar's Scratch Kitchen, they're serving up homemade classics at wallet-pleasing prices. Visit today on Remington in Bolingbrook. Order online at Cheddar's.com. Lewis faculty and staff get 10% off their orders with a valid Lewis ID. Cheddar's Scratch Kitchen, get a lot for not a lot. Visit Cheddar's on Remington Boulevard in Bolingbrook. Meantime... Nick and Ivy Brewing, perfect spot to enjoy the best craft beer in the area. Whether you have a taste for a lager, IPA, ale, or anything in between, Nick and Ivy has the offering in their tap room. That's N-I-K, by the way. Located just over the bridge at 1026 South State in downtown Lockport, Nick and Ivy Brewing offers over 10 locally crafted beers every single night. Live music as well. Visit them online, nickivybrewing.com, or call them 815-524-4857. Nick and Ivy Brewing. Out sponsor of Flyers Athletics. The next home game for the Flyers. Nothing's finalized yet, but again, looking like the Lewis women will be hosting a first round match next Monday here in the GLVC tournament. Men hoping for a first round bye. Drive left off the inbounds, left side layup. Good. Tough shot by Kraus. So 
A 10 point lead on the ball for Lewis. 50 seconds to play. Schmidt center circle, hands it off. Grace Hilbert. Grace drives. We're just sort of playing keep away, although Ramsey open for three, so she drains it. She was so wide open, it was like, well, I've got to shoot it. That's why I'm here. And she hit it in 85 72 with 35 seconds to play. So that pretty much seals this. Drive left side, layup good there again by Breeden. It's an 11 point lead with 30 seconds to go. And the Flyers can basically dribble this one out. They're going to come front court. And it's like a half second difference, game clock and shot clock. And we're going to win this thing 85 74. But I tell you what, the Bearcats really, really gave us one heck of a battle. They played about as well as you can play on the road with nine players in uniform as the heavy underdog. And shot clock violation with just a fraction of a second to go. They'll inbound it, and this game will be over. I'm not sure why they're even making them do it, but <laughs> I, I guess technically they have to. They get it in, and there's the buzzer. Flyers win it 85-74. Stick around, WJOL.com online. We'll get you the post-game interview with Coach Matt Nelson as Lewis gets it done here today to win their eighth in a row. And they now improve to 13 and 12, 11 and 6. McKendry drops to 3 and 20, 2 and 14 in the league. Two-minute timeout. We'll wrap things up and we're going to talk to the coach back in two on the Flyers Sports Network. Pizza is Chicago's number one pizza. Fat Ricky's is located on Route 53 in Normantown.